Hi, beautiful. Okay, so today I want to focus on self-healing. Now, I'm going to focus on Reiki as a self-healing practice, but if you are also incorporating other kinds of self-healing practices, um, then, you know, this is that is totally okay as well. Um, whether it be crystal healing, you might be doing meditation, um, you, you might be doing, you know, other sorts of, um, maybe it's mantra work, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to self-healing, it is really, 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 really important that you are making time for it. The reason is, is because especially as a caregiver, space holder, practitioner, and even just a human being, you have a real responsibility to take care of yourself, right? And practicing some kind of self-healing is a really great way for you to take time out of the chaos of your modern, modern life. And when you take that time to really be still, to connect with yourself, you have this incredible opportunity to find all those answers that you are seeking. And I really don't think that often we are making enough time for these, for these particular practices when it comes to ourselves. I know that there are blocks around that and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of those common blocks and, you know, maybe what you can do about that or or why you've got those blocks as well, some really common, common examples. So the first one is time. <laughs> so if we're thinking about a Reiki practice, very often, you know, you'll do your level one training and in that level one training, well, I know it, certainly in my courses, level one training, you know, you go through a self-healing practice that takes like 40, about 40 minutes. And when you're in that kind of environment, you know, when you're at a training course and you are with others, or even, you know, if you're training one-on-one, -on -one, very often it's just part of the the whole day. I mean, you're away from life as such. You're kind of in this mini little retreat. Um, you've been focusing on yourself for the morning. And then by the time we get to, uh, to even, you know, doing a, a self-healing practice, you're already like, you're so ready for that. And, it, and it's awesome. Um, and everybody else is doing it. And the vibe feels really amazing. And we, you've absolutely got the time there to do it. Like there's nothing that you need to do before or after that other than just be in the class. Um, so there's, you know, there's lots of things, I guess, going on in terms of the context of, of why, you know, sometimes at, in a training program, it's so much easier to, to practice doing a self-healing. Then, you know, after the, after the training, you go home and life starts to happen and it can be really hard to make that time for yourself, for actually doing a self-practice. Also, I know that some people have already got practices that they're already doing or like a morning ritual or even an evening ritual or an afternoon ritual and things that um, they're already doing and feel really good about doing and it's feels like to add a self-healing treatment would be like to add perhaps, you know, another thing that they need to do. So let's talk a little bit about that first of all. So the first thing I want to say is that when somebody says to me, I don't have time, I just always, even if I hear myself saying it, I don't have time for that. I've in the last few years, I really started turning that around and asking myself, instead of like saying, I don't have time, it's more about why, why don't I have time? And because we have time, we all have time. And, 
you know, most, most of us, like, you know, 99% of us have time to take even 10 minutes out of our day for ourselves. And at the moment, it might feel like you don't have the time, but it's probably because you're doing something else with that 10 minutes, you know, with that time. So really it's about just reassessing our priorities. And that's really what it comes down to is how can I make the time and why won't I make the time? And I would really encourage you to sit with that if that feels like it's something that is blocking you at the moment. The next one I would I would say is that, um, you know, how can we add it to something that we're already doing or is it just, is it really just about using or having Reiki there as another tool we can use and add into our existing toolkit. And and the, what I mean by that is how can we actually just incorporate our Reiki healing and our self-treatments as something else that we can just have like on the shelf or just like there in case we we want to access it and we want we want to use it. So at certain times in your life, what you're doing already is really going to work for you. And there are going to be days or times when you feel like you need something else or um, you feel like, you know, you want to change up something that you're already doing. Um, and with that, I would say, leave it open, like leave open the idea of maybe bringing in Reiki as a self-treatment into your existing practices or adding it as, you know, another, another kind of practice, but don't just, don't just leave it out because you feel like you've already got so much that you can do, or you, you know, there, there's so much already there. I'd really encourage you just to stay open with that. And I never think, you know, if I, if I think about the Reiki precept, so just for today, I will do my work honestly. Now, Usui Sensei shared this. Of course, you know, it's about being authentic and living an authentic life. But when it, if we apply that to our practice, it's also really applicable, right, in terms of we want to be doing our self-practice and even our work as practitioners, but we want to do that authentically. So if you are showing up and you're just ticking the box of doing a self-treatment or these, you know, self-healings or whatever else you are doing, and you're just ticking that box to get it done, just as a thing that's on your to-do list, that's not authentic. That is not the right reason to be doing these things. The right reason is because it feels really good. It's adding benefit to your life. It is actually making a difference to your day-to-day. -day. It shouldn't feel like a chore. It shouldn't feel like just something that you have to do. And the other reason is because your presence in your Reiki practice is really, really important and if you're just going through the motions and aren't really, really invested in your practice, then the benefits just aren't going to be there, to be honest. You are better off having a really good quality 10-minute practice than trying to sit there and do 40 minutes of, you know, every single um, every single body, body part. So I want you to really think about also looking at even your other practices, it's really good just to assess where am I at today? What do I need today? You know, what do, what do I feel like is going to be the best practice that's really going to help me today? And it might be Reiki and it might be something else. Um, let's talk about adding Reiki to some other practices. So um, I'm, I'm really, really, um, uh, like I, I love and I'm really supportive of using Reiki as a complementary modality. I think that 
well, you know, I think every practitioner, you know, whether it be a therapist or, you know, what doesn't matter what kind of modality you work in, I think everyone who is holding space should learn Reiki. And I think that every human should learn Reiki as well. I have just seen so many benefits from others, but also from myself that having, you know, a lot of the times we learn modalities and we don't learn how to actually heal the self or the importance of taking time out to work with ourselves and connect with our energetic body, which is so, so important, Um, especially if you're sensitive, especially if you're sensitive. And so many people who are drawn to helping others absolutely are. We feel as, right? We feel everything. And and we're also hyper aware and it's so important for us to be able to manage and protect that energy, but to really manage it, to understand it, to have that, you know, self-awareness. And I'm delving into the benefits now, but it's just so, so important for you to incorporate some kind of Reiki practice, I think, even if you absolutely love other modalities. So let's talk about joining, joining Reiki with other modalities. And I'm not, um, I also totally respect that there are some modalities out there, some meditation practices and things like that, that, um, write out just kind of rules around this. So if that resonates with you and if you are following one of those, please just ignore this, um, for those particular practices and modalities. But it's really cool if you are also just open to incorporating and finding ways to incorporate Reiki into your existing practices and other modalities. So let's talk about that for a little bit. For example, meditation. I think many of us are either meditators or we try meditation and we're like, oh, it's just not for me. Um, Or we're doing some kind of meditation work. And um, I want to talk to you about how it can help if you're an existing meditator or it can also help if you're not, if you don't like it and you would like to get more into it. Like you've, you've felt resistance towards meditating in the past and it just hasn't worked for you. So um, this is, this is how you can incorporate Reiki into your meditation practices. So the first thing you could do is, um, is what actually the first thing you need to understand is that remembering that Reiki is about oneness, right? It's about getting to that point of the great white light. It is about returning to the truth of who we are, returning to pure love, consciousness, oneness, unity, um, satori, enlightenment, you know, all of the things. And in a way, meditation is very similar in terms of the, the end goal. So if we really think about it, this is how I like to think about all of these practices, to be honest, is they're very much like looking at the side of a crystal. So I'm holding up a crystal here now with, and it's just a raw point a crystal point and it has different facets right different sides but they all lead to the same point at the top and this is what's really important to remember and to understand is that sometimes we're just looking and we're focusing on one side one face of the of the crystal of the of our modalities of you know our spirituality of our um of our journey and that is so fine but i just want to point that out because nothing is better than something else. It's just that sometimes this is what I, why I'm asking you to be open to incorporating Reiki into your healing, into your self-healing practice, because everything, you know, nothing is going to be suitable all the time and nothing is going to resonate all the time, every single day, every moment of the day. So it's so nice to sometimes change things up or have other options and I and ideas as well um, to help you. Okay, so meditation. So when we begin meditating, 
very often we're going into a place where, you know, whether it's mindfulness or whether you're doing a guided meditation or, you know, some sort of mon mantra work or whatever it might be, breath work, etc. Sometimes the focus on, on those things is to still, if we just talk about like a kind of a really basic kind of traditional meditation, it's to still the mind, right? It's to kind of come into this place where the mind is still. Now, for very many of for many of us, and, and this is why meditation doesn't always resonate and why a lot of people struggle with it, is because just trying to do that is really hard for many people. They've just got so much going on in their head and even just trying to still the mind just is it sounds like a huge challenge. So you can apply this whether you're a beginner or more advanced as well. So basically the idea is when we begin our meditation practice, you can begin. And if you are having trouble stilling the mind to begin with, like step one, if that is really hard for you, this is your invitation to bring Reiki into it. So how do you do that? Well, so glad you asked <laughs> because it's so simple. Basically, the first thing that you can do is really get curious and tap into where are you feeling that resistance? And if it's in your head, if it's actually in your head, like you feel like, oh, my God, I just can't stop thinking, bring your palms over your eyes. This is just such a nice practice that you can do to help still the mind. This that is the purpose of, you know, of that hand position as well in self treatments is to place the palms over the eyes to help still the mind. And just wait there, just hold that there while you are practicing reiki. So you can do that until, you know, for as long as you want, or you can go then into, you know, maybe another resistance point will come up, you know, maybe you'll feel something else. Maybe it's, you feel a bit of anxiousness or tightness in your shoulders or your throat or your chest or whatever. And you can see, this is where you could start moving to the next, placing your palms onto the next part of your body and so on and so on. Um, when you start to feel like you don't need the, need your hands, drop them and just go back to, to your meditation practice. So again, it's just there as an option just to, to keep this option, keep your options open and a, a possibility to in, invite and use Reiki into, into your self practices already. Another one that I absolutely love is of course, crystal healing. So when we are connecting with crystals, they can just be such an amazing way for us to really connect in with something tangible, um, which often helps, especially if you're not great at kind of sensing, you know, something esoteric and something in the, in the spirit world. And, and you're like, I just don't that I'm, I'm not getting it and just not feeling that right now, actually holding on to a crystal can really help us it can help ground you, it, you know, it can help bring you back into your center. It can just help, um, help you feel really safe. Um, so many benefits of incorporating crystals into your own self practices. And again, if you are already doing crystal healing practice and connecting to a crystal, uh, you, again, you can bring Reiki into that as well. And it's just such a beautiful complement to your crystal healing. And, um, you know, you can see here, just these are just a few examples. Um, you can see here how you can start to incorporate incorporate this. If you are doing some basic somatic work as well, where you're focusing and witnessing um, you know, different sensation felt in the in the body. Again, um as you are witness, you are so welcome then to start incorporating Reiki into this practice as well. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits now. And um, I mentioned earlier about having awareness about your energy, protecting, managing your energy. Um, it's also going to really help with clarity, 
with helping you to just be a lot more calmer, more grounded, more centered, just really connecting with your sense of self. Um, and, you know, it's about self-compassion as well. It's the ultimate form of self-care is just to hold a space for you, for yourself, where you just get to meet you, meet yourself in this really loving and light filled space. And that is so, so beautiful. If you are having trouble, um, you know, coming back to a bit of the resistance, I talked about time and in the next, I also want to just talk a little bit about resistance to actually holding the self. So I just talked about self-compassion and, you know, that really meeting ourselves where we're at. If you have resistance to doing that and if you're kind of at the beginning or just going through stuff, you know, a time in your life where that really feels difficult and challenging for you right now to be in a space where you can be self accepting and self-loving and self-compassionate and showing yourself all of these things, um, to, you know, in a, in the pursuit of increasing our self-worth and self-confidence, et cetera, and empowerment, I'd really encourage you to start really small. And if doing it on yourself is really hard, try doing it on your something that represents you. It could be a photo of yourself could be your favorite toy, <laughs> could be your favorite crystal, could be, you know, your food and drink, could be your bed, whatever. Um, there's lots of options there. But that can be a really nice way just for you to start to start before you feel comfortable actually placing your hands on, on your own body and on yourself. So the other couple of things that I just wanted to mention too is that when you do a self-practice, it can really help to amplify the effectiveness of using other things like other Reiki tools, like your symbols and also working with the precepts. So I'd really encourage you as well to try using, you know, using the symbols in your self, self-practice, but also getting into, you know, a, a, a Reiki connection and then connecting with the precepts as well. And what you find is that you really start increasing and deepening your connection with these, with these you know, other areas of, of Reiki. This is especially really important, I think, if you are practicing or if you're wanting to teach. You know, these things have so much to teach us ourselves. And very often the first thing that we want to do is ask somebody outside of ourselves, um, you know, like who, what do we need or what's wrong with us? Or, you know, tell me, give me some answers, give me some guidance. But really we can get so much from just practicing with the self. We have so much inner wisdom and so much inner guidance and you're never alone in that. You know, sometimes I think there is this idea that, oh, you know, my intuition doesn't know, like I'm, I don't have that self-trust, but you're not alone. Your intuition is this incredible guide that is a collective of your ancestors, of all your lifetimes, of, you know, all your teachers, all your experiences like of the collective, there is so much, um, there is so much wisdom that you have picked up along your journey, on your soul's journey, I want to say, that I really think that, um, you know, it, it's not, it's not just you as an individual, as a, you know, separate entity giving yourself this guidance. You are really connecting with so much more than that when you, take time out of the craziness and the chaos of the day to really focus on, on having moments where you can listen to the truth of who you are. So having a self-practice, a regular self-practice is just so, so important. And remembering that 
you know, you always have the opportunity to choose love. And if you have 10 minutes to scroll on the gram (laughs) or 10 minutes to hold yourself in unconditional love, I hope you will choose love. Thank you so much. And I hope you've enjoyed.